A very good morning and welcome to our second day of live streaming from this, the Scottish Open Grand Prix here at the fantastic Emirates Arena in Glasgow. And as you can see, the players entering the court for our first streaming match of the day. It's women's singles, Carolina Marin, top seed for the tournament, of course, against Ireland's Chloe McGee. These players have met on four occasions previously. And Carolina with the winning record 3 to 1 against Chloe. Of course, Carolina now number 18 in the world. Very good morning and welcome to the second day streaming here at the Yonix Scottish Open at the fantastic Emirates Arena in Glasgow. I'm Mark Phelan and I'll be with you here for most of the day. Alongside me for the morning's play will be Dan Travers and our first match on court as you can see warming up. Carolina Marin from Spain, world number 18 against Chloe McGee of Ireland, world ranked 42. These players have met on four occasions in the past. And it's Carolina with the upper hand at the moment. 3-1 winning record against Chloe. Chloe's victory coming way back in 2009. In the European Mixed Team Championships winning in three in that occasion. But since then, Carolina, of course, has gone on to great things. And uh, this is her first tournament back, of course. Carrying a slight knee injury after her victory over Kirsty Gilmore in the London Grand Prix. Down at the copper box. Almost two months ago now. And of course, Carolina got a big scare in the first round yesterday against Meta Paulson of Denmark. Came through in the end to take her spot in this second round of the women's singles. Chloe will feel she has a chance given. Uh, Carolina has been out from injury, out through injury for about two months. And certainly, given her form yesterday against Meta Poulsen, the Irish woman will certainly feel that she has an opportunity to do some damage here on our streaming court. Dan, welcome. And uh, obviously, Carolina, the overwhelming favourite for this. And uh, But, you know, she's up against a tough competitor in Chloe McGee. Yeah, the one thing that Chloe does is make you work for everything. And uh, I don't think Carolina will be relishing this challenge so early in the day. I think she's just come back and uh, this is an ideal opportunity for Chloe uh, to make her mark. And uh, I think she will be very confident having watched yesterday um, the match against Poulsen. But uh, I think it will be very, very interesting and very, very tough in my head. In that match yesterday against Meta Paulson, Carolina lost the first game 22-20, 16-10 down in the second before coming back in that second to win 21-17 and then taking the third 21-16. So as always, Carolina very mentally strong. Of course, Chloe had a really good win yesterday against Australian Tara Pilvin in two easy games, six and eight. So, um, certainly uh, buoyed by that performance. The Australian certainly not the best player in the world, but to beat anyone at a Grand Prix six and eight is a measure of uh, some decent form. Yeah, indeed. Any time you beat anyone at single figures at this level, it's a very, very good performance from you. Speaking to Chloe before the game, you know, she's up for it. She 
is ready. She doesn't mind playing in the morning. I do know Carolina is not a morning person in general. But I think Carolina got a fright yesterday in that game and I don't think she's here going to make the same mistake again. Well, I'm sure she'll, she'll be up for it and she will know that Chloe's going to make her fight for everything. So I'm looking forward to a lovely shot there from Carolina around the head. Chloe just has to stay patient and make her work hard. Superb, and already Caroline is getting vocal on court. And when she's vocal on court, you know she's in good form. Yeah, and she's keyed up, and uh, she knows how important this is to have a good start here. She's got a lovely, fluent overhead action, and as with all top players in the world, they can hit anywhere with it. So you just have to be patient and that's a shot from Chloe there. I think Caroline was expecting a straight shot. So a nice deception from Chloe. Now better again from Chloe. So 5-3 lead for Marin for with a lot of the top players down the bottom half of the draw. You've got Kirsty Gilmore, Zhang Biwen, Linda Zachiri, Corrales, Sashina, all down on the bottom half of the draw. Little bit of luck from McGee. Acknowledges the look with the hand gesture across the court to Carolina. Dan, what is it that really sets Carolina Marin apart and above the rest of you know many of the players in Europe? Well, she's normally very, very consistent, but this just coming back, this is why I feel Chloe must make her work for everything because she missed a net shot earlier and for me to see her miss a net shot it was a simple shot it just shows she's anxious about it she knows she's going to have to work hard and they're just turning again now she's had this knee problem and if Chloe's, Chloe's going to do something today she's got to make her twist and turn and but Car Carolina is a, a superb player very consistent and she's got winning shots from anywhere Overhead, lovely action. Uh, she's a lovely mover as well on the court, very balanced. You see that there, taking the net shot early, putting ah! Chloe under pressure. Now Chloe's made a mistake. But it's just quality, it's the level of her shots, the quality of her shots when she's at her best. That's what hurts opponents. Coming back from injury, um, does that play in the mind of a player? As a player who hasn't really suffered from injury, knowing that she's coming back with a little, uh, little problem with her knee, will that mentally uh, affect her, do you think? Yeah, I think it'll be in there. At, when Chloe played that cross-court cut from her forehand, um, Carolina really, in my opinion, didn't make an effort to go for it. She just accepted it was going to beat her. But I, I would like to see her if, if... Now, she and Fernando, he's getting a little bit anxious at the back of the court. They've had one or two conversations already. That's her coach. And uh, Chloe up now 9-6 and she just needs to keep this going. She doesn't need to try and force things there. 
make her work for everything and then Carolina will start to doubt she's had six or seven weeks out uh, has she done enough training etc and make her turn on that knee so th this is a good start for the Irish woman leading 10-6 six. six minutes gone and so far tactically Chloe doing everything she needs to do against Marin. Poor enough net shot from McGee. And that's normally what happens. That the, the lesser player, if you like, Caroline being the, the higher seeded player, Caroline would be confident normally. Uh, Chloe would be feeling a bit of pressure, have to try and get her shots a little bit tighter than playing the normal uh, women that she would be facing on the other side of the net. When you come up against a seed, gets you a little anxious, you think I need to do something just that wee bit better and you often don't, you just need to keep doing what you're good at and Chloe's very very good at keeping the rallies going and she just needs to dig in here and make Carolina earn it, see that's a silly mistake she's got a chance here, she's got to stay positive all the time Very important, certainly the coach's role in a game like this, keeping you know the lower ranked player positive and believing and doing the right thing. Absolutely, Mark. Yeah, that, that's just a simple smash, but it's a good quality smash. It's quite near the sideline. Caroline's got to move out and take the pressure on her weaker knee. And she just made a mistake there. Fernando comes in and just a little reassuring tap on the shoulder. Uh, he knows that she just may be suffering just a little bit uh, with confidence more than anything after that match yesterday. Oh, absolutely. And it, it, th there will be some self-doubt there, um, especially since she's beaten Chloe quite comfortably in the past. Uh, but it's just the coming back from injury, the niggling doubts in your head. And if Chloe can make her work, I keep saying it, make her work for everything, then she might get uh, the reward at the end of the day. And she is very, very good at that. As soon as I saw this match this morning that we were doing it, Mark, I was looking forward to it. Because she's a fantastic fighter, Chloe McGee. As always, if you're watching and you're tweeting, don't forget to use the hashtag SOGP. S send us a tweet and we'll do our best to give you a shout out live here on air. I hope you're enjoying the coverage and enjoying the match. As myself and Dan certainly are here in the arena. Yes, lovely, lovely control on the little drop. And, and, and very clever making Carolina move from the round the head corner to her forehand corner. Cover the full diagonal of the court with a slow drop there. Very, very good. Yeah, as you can see, lots of children from the local schools in here today. Plenty of thunder sticks making lots of noise. And, and you would see there, Chloe, the, the reason Caroline's so good, the high serve there. She has to hit a base in the middle of the court. She doesn't know where she's going, and you just saw her weight shift onto her right leg there at the wrong point, and Caroline played a straight cut, and then Chloe made a mistake trying to pick it up. But she just has to focus on the shuttle. Watch the shuttle. That's a nice shot. Car Caroline's made a few mistakes off cuts. That, that are very uncharacteristic of her. So, as I say, self-doubt will start to come in and uh, she'll find herself in a real battle because Chloe is a fighter. And Chloe is a girl who certainly doesn't get intimidated by higher-ranked players. You know, she, she'll go and she'll do the best she can and never gets phased by playing against a higher-ranked player. She, she's got a fantastic attitude on the court. She loves the challenge. Loves the challenge and enjoys it. The psychology of the game in singles is very important. You're out there and it's showtime. So you want everyone to watch you. So you have to be a little bit of an extrovert. If you're a shrinking violet, there's no room for you in a singles court, I'm afraid. Of course, Carolina Marin, one of the few women singles players who use the backhand serve, the short serve, more effectively than anybody else. 
a feature of the women's game that's coming into the women's game, Dan? I think it, I think it does. I think even in my time when I was on the, the, the circuit as a coach, um, you can see that, that the women's game follows the men's game. So if you want to be ahead of the game in the female side, you should have been practicing jump smashes a few years ago. Uh, you should be backhand low serving. Girls are getting physically stronger, techniques getting better, they can hit the shuttle harder. Caroline serves low, she wants you to lift the shuttle so she can dominate the rallies. But if you take her on at the net, she's well balanced, she'll be in there looking for the net as well. You can hear her getting very, very vocal now. 12-13, and I, I think a little bit of that as well is intimidation. And uh, as Mark said earlier, Chloe doesn't get affected with that. But Caroline also G's herself up with shouting at herself all the time. Yeah, she's certainly a character and uh, certainly, you know, our sport may be lacking a few stars at the moment after the retirement of some higher profile singles players. And I hear a lot of people complaining about Carolina. Oh, she's too loud. Oh, she shouts too loud. I, I don't go along with that. Let her shout. Let her scream. You know, that's her and that's the way she plays the game. And it's the same with these thunder sticks. There's so many people don't like the thunder sticks, yeah. but they create noise, interest, get the kids involved, and uh, if that's what it takes, then then let them do it. Let them do it. We need a higher profile in this of the sport. And all these kids here at the Emirates Arena are in for these festivals that Badminton Scotland put on so successfully every time. It's a good spell for the Spaniard. Four points in a row. Leveling it up. I do. I do all. think Chloe's got to be a little careful when she's lifting from this side. Obviously, there's a slight drift going towards Caroline. Uh, Chloe's left a couple and they've been in. Caroline's leaving several and they're all going out at the back. So it would suggest to me the drift is uh, against Caroline. So Chloe just needs to be way, a little bit wary of a lift, and she's done it again. Unfortunately. Yeah. I think on the balance of it, there, there's about. Um, in old money, a couple of inches, two inches of drift. In new, about 50 millimeters difference between uh, both ends. I hear some of the players saying so. Well, whatever it is, I, th I think that's five or six shots. Chloe's lifted yeah. out the back. Now she's she's panicking a little. You can see her there. Yeah. Come on, stick to your game plan. And all of a sudden, the body language changes. Yep. You can Keep see a little bit court. of negativity from McGee. And it's Marin who was pumped. But this is what the players don't understand, Mark. That's 16-13. She's given five or six shots away. So if you take the, sh the number of shots she's hit out the back, then she's 13-10 up. And it's, it's every shot matters so much when you're out there. Yeah. That's the shot I think she's getting a lot of dividends from, a cross cut from her forehand. Ah, some unbelievable net shot from Marin. But Chloe hanging in there in this rally. Very good rally. Yep. And that was a lovely net shot from Chloe there. Yeah, a nice deception from McGee. Watching it the whole way. Oh, and a good superb. rally from the Irish girl. Superb. Well done. An important point for Chloe. She had lost seven in a row. And she knows she can live with these players, Chloe. It, it, She's just got to try and get there a little bit earlier at the front to put them under enormous pressure when they're coming forward and try and force them to lift for her. There you are, that lovely overhead from Carleen. So difficult. You've just got to say to yourself, if she hits to the front, you might get there late, but you're going to get there as long as you do not move before she hits it. Pretty decent lift from McGee at the net. Better length this time. Yeah, and drawing the air. Un uncharacteristic error from I, I, Marin. I think Chloe's got to be lifting higher. I think the reason she's hitting them out, she feels slightly under pressure when she's lifting. And it's 
16 minutes, 17 minutes just turning over match clock. It's Marin with five game points. Yeah, and that's it. First game to Carolina Marin, and certainly a game of two halves for the Spaniard. Pretty slow start, and then slipped into fourth gear in the second half of that game, and just pulled away from the Irish woman. I just think Chloe's lost her way a little bit here. Uh, right at the start of the, the first set, when she was being successful, she was making Caroline move the full diagonals of the court. She had an opportunity there just to play a straight backhand net from the forehand cross from Caroline and she tried to turn it back across and made a mistake. She should just make her work, work, work and make her turn, make her move the full diagonals and turn her and hit her fast cut from her forehand. That's what was doing the damage at the start. Not a slow shot from her forehand but up there and hit the fast cross court cut. And a family affair on the McGee side of the net. Of course, Chloe, mixed doubles partner and brother Sam, and national coach Dan. And I'm sure there's lots of McGee's watching back in Ruffo and Donegal at the moment. And Fernando, who's done such a good job, especially with the girls in Spain. Of course, we have Beatrice Corrales, who sometimes, you know, just flies under the radar. Carolina takes all the headlines, but Corrales becoming a world-class player too. Inside the world's top 30 in the world. And uh, multiple winner, four-time winner, I think, on the European circuit last year. So as both girls emerge back on court, one game to love for the Spaniard in green. Carolina just hitting the shuttle just to check the difference between both sides of the net and the drift. court from McGee yeah well played from the Irish girl I think that's what you were talking about Dan yeah I, th I think when you're against a quality player if you play anything slow unless it's an interception that you're cutting out early and just tapping down uh, Chloe did it very well at the start of the first set but the quality players are such good movers that anything slow uh, they're going to go on early and they'll put you in trouble from there's another nice shot there. She's got to, when she plays net against Caroline, I, I would be standing right on the net and try and force her to lift all the time for me. But she, I don't feel she likes to lift. I think she likes to play back on the net from your net. But Chloe's out there and she will keep fighting all the way. That, that's a certainty here. And she'll make Caroline work for everything she gets. But it'll be interesting to see what the, the tactics from the coaches, if it changes anything. I think Carolina will certainly be aware of the drift. What? She saw at least four or five. Yeah, and the drift seems to be going slightly from the umpire's chair at a diagonally back down to the scoreboard on the far side. I think Chloe was quite lucky there because she seemed to be dominating the rally and then Caroline played a poor lift up her forehand and she hit a, what I would only describe as a poor shot at this level, just straight onto Caroline's forehand side at her and she just lifted her but uh, she's got it back, she's got it back, kept going. That serve from Chloe certainly looks short. I think 
fortunate to get away with that rally, McGee. Again, Pat. a reasonable start from Chloe in this game, pretty similar to the first. And you know what they say, Mark? Unfortunately, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Oh. Once again, there, down low, I think you've got to stand right on the net and try and make Carlene lift the shuttle. Uh, it's clear to me that she doesn't want to lift when it's down low and she just tries to play straight or cross nets. So you've got to be so alert there and try and on the net and make her lift. Now that was very good from Chloe, moving forward onto the serve and pushing it flat into Caroline's backhand corner. Little punch clear from Marin. There's that cross net again from the Spaniard. Oh, yeah. That's a lovely shot from Carleen because th the drift definitely is going, as you said, Mark, from the umpire's chair towards the service judge down the hall, as well as going from Carleen towards Chloe. Yeah. Um, but you could see she hit, she aimed the shot into court and the drift is taking it at the end there, quite close to the line. And that's the difference. The quality players can handle this. A lesser player, when they're under pressure, just do what they normally do and they lift it out often. But the quality player adjusts. Yeah, nice play from McGee, a little fist pump. Yeah, we're sitting about 20 meters back behind Carolina. And certainly, I can feel the draft. <laughs> It's well, much stronger today than it was yesterday, for whatever reason. I've got my ski jacket on, so <laughs> I can't feel anything. I'm numb. Over, you five, Scots are always four. numb to cold weather anyway. Certainly can't feel my wallet. I hope I've left it at home. Oh, nice net from McGee. What a good deep That's lift good from Marin. That was a lovely cross-court clear from Chloe there. Up very aggressively. I think Caroline might have thought she was hitting down. But a lovely cross-clear. Nice action. Good control of that rally from the Irish girl. Yeah, and she's playing very well. It's just if she looks at her unforced errors in the first set, that's the difference. Won the rally with a broken string, I think, Carolina. The replay coming in from the kill. Yeah, takes a look down to the racket, sees a broken string. It's the third racket change for Carolina in this match. She changed at the interval also in the first game. Six all and point for point at the beginning of the second game. It's Marin, of course, one set to the good. Yeah, managing the drift very well. Yeah, she is, and, and she's quality. That is just beautiful, the movement into around the head there. And then the racket arm. She could have hit that shuttle anywhere in the court she wanted to. So on balance and in control. See there, in my opinion, the drift just carried that out to the side there. 
Chloe just needs to remember the drift and when it goes in her forehand hit into court there you are and the drift just taking it out again there from Caroline Carolina just getting a little bit lucky on the drop. Yeah, but it's a genuine quality shot. Slightly lucky in that occasion, but uh, she's aiming for as close to that tape as she can get. And the more she practices, the luckier she gets. I see it here on the replay, the high serve from McGee. And the drop is catching the tape and following it in for the kill at the net. Good around the head from Chloe. Ooh. Good length on the lift from Chloe. Right to the back. I think she's been lifting slightly short here, which is why Caroline's been attacking so much more. But that one was a little bit deeper. Got an error. Yeah, called in. I think the serve also was a little bit short. She's really attacking those high serves. I don't think Chloe's finding the baseline with those serves into the wind. Good. And that's the shot that she was getting all the success, in my opinion. It was putting her on the front foot in the first, first set. Fast cross cut. Making Caroline turn on that knee. Again, I'm just noticing on the serve from McGee, Marin is taking the, sh the shuttle well inside the double service line. So I think Chloe certainly needs to find more length on those serves. And, and she, sh she should know, having played on the fast side with the, the number she hit out, she's now hitting into a drift. She can hit it slightly harder. As long as she gets the height and the shuttle will get held into court with the drift. So I, I can't understand why she's serving so short because it can't be part of the plan to have Caroline attacking her. Because as I say, her overhead action is so nice and smooth. She can play it anywhere she wants. Again, you can see all the children from the local schools cheering and clapping with the thunder sticks from this nice wide shot. And don't forget Twitter, hashtag it is OGP for all your tweets. Play. Yeah, Carolina put that one there to attack for Chloe. <laughs> oh, this time. Just a little bit long from Marin. Oh. And, and that's what I feel Chloe has to do. When you're on the side, when you're on the slow side and your opponent's got the wind behind them, you look for the front of the court and you try and make them lift. You try and make them give you the shuttle in the air. And that's, that's definitely the drift just taking that out the side of the court there. 12, if there had been no drift at all, that shuttle would have hit the line or the inside of the line for me. But again, it's maybe a sign that Caroline's not entirely 100% happy, maybe feels under a little bit of pressure because it's so close. Three points in a row for McGee. Oh. That is over. That's a poor oh. shot. Yeah. Didn't even reach the net there. Carolina, something, Carolina pointing to the cork, I think she's not happy with the speed of the shuttle maybe, referee being called I think, another playing on, he certainly was trying to attract the referee's attention there Mark, but she's not come on to court, or maybe just spotted somebody in the crowd, Mm. 
Marin pushing when McGee made, onto the backhand side. And as soon as she made Chloe take it in the backhand, she was so fast up the court to take the net shot so early. And there again, the same again, Dan. Yep. Pushing McGee onto the backhand side and rushing the net in anticipation of the short return. We hear the Scottish children getting behind the Irish girl. Uh oh, well, that's pinpoint a accuracy. Bad leave from Chloe. Now, yeah, struggle on the backhand side. Carolina, nice and tight to the net. If she's in doubt at all, she's got to hit the shuttle and not be hoping it's out. See, that's wild, Caroline trying to force it there. But Chloe's just got to get in here and, and make her work, make her work and dig deep. And then you might get a little bit of the self-doubt coming back in. Again, the speed of Marin taking the shuttle really high at the net. And the reason she can do that, Mark, is a racket is up. I hope all the kids in Scotland are watching that there. Moving forward with a racket high. You see it in the replay. Coming in and then moving forward with a racket high. And of course, if you're taking the shuttle above the net, it's always going to go down. Oh, called out. Close. That is over. 14, 15. Again, a little bit of good fortune, I think, for McGee because the shuttle set up there for Carolina to attack. I think that's just a little bit of nerves there and uh, being out for so long. I think if she'd been playing consistently, she wouldn't have made that error. So that will give Chloe some heart, as will that. Now we're getting to the interesting part of the game, and it's who handles the nerves here. That's two clears in a row. Drifted over the baseline from Marin. Oh, nice backhand kill. It was, but it, it was a terrible serve from Chloe. So short there to allow Marin to attack her. And that's when she needed to put in a decent length serve. She needed to get Carleen right to the back of the court. But she's allowing her the initiative in that rally from serving so short, and you don't want to be doing that against a player of the quality of Caroline Marin. This time, no mistake from Marin. If Chloe's going to play that lift into the forehand, she needs to get it high and in behind her, not flat like that. I think Chloe's nervous because I, I always think when I watch her that she makes any player work so hard to beat her and she's just given it away there, a couple of silly shots so hopefully she'll get it back. Yeah, three shots in a row, very silly. And you can see her losing the plot there. Referee having a, or the umpire having a word with her there. She just needs to get her thoughts back together. Yeah, that's better yeah. from Chloe. See, she's just, she's getting it back, she's making her think, and then you get an error. But when you try and force the issue, try to play too tight to the net, that's when you often make mistakes yourself. Just make sure it's in the court and make them work. Good, good from Chloe McGee. That was very good. She, she just played that early tap down, and she was looking for Caroline to cross lift off the backhand there. And she did exactly that. So now we're back almost level. 
Yeah, good response from Miggy after, you know, three or four bad points. Yep, she gathered the thoughts well. That's better. Well left, well left. See, in behind her on the forehand side, that's the shot. Anything flat, Caroline's going to take it. She's got good racket carriage. She looks for things early. Looks to exert pressure on you all the time. Great net. Looked like it was going out anyway. But Carolina electing to take it. I think that was just the wrong choice of shot for Chloe there. She was a little bit off balance. I think she should have punched a clear into the forehand or round the head corners. Give herself a bit of time to get set back up and in control of her movement again. But she went for something and Caroline took it so early at the front of the court and put her in trouble. And she was in control up to that point. Match point for the Spaniard. Top seed. That's well left from McGee. And she stares her down the barrel of a gun. Good recovery from the Irish number one. It's certainly Marin. A Carolina Marin on top of her game would have won that. Oh. Even if it came over the net, Dan, Carolina was there ready and waiting. She was there. She had just the way that Chloe went to the shot. She knew what was coming back and she was ready for it if it came over. So second match point for Marin. Yeah, the shot down the forehand side, not deep enough, put it in front of Carolina yeah. again. And that was something that Chloe has been doing all the match, not deep enough behind Carolina on the forehand side. You have to get behind her so she's turning, twisting and turning on that knee and Best doing what Chloe was doing yeah. so well at the start of the game, making her cover the full diagonals of the court. To Carolina again, once the match was won, went over to the umpire discussing the shuttle. So uh, something not quite right with the shuttle. And uh, I'll be looking forward to asking her about that after the game. But uh, I think a two-game win and playing pretty much within herself, Dan, do you think? I, I think she'll only get better as the tournament goes on. Uh, she'll gain more confidence when you're out for a little bit of time. You, you've got that little bit of self-doubt. Yesterday wouldn't help, but she'd be delighted to come through a tough match yesterday and to come through again here in another tough game. Uh, I'm sure she'll just grow in confidence. So the players leave the court. Chloe McGee in the front. Carolina just taking a sip from a bottle. Looking quite calm and quite relaxed. It's Carolina who advances to the next round. And uh, we'll be back our next match on court with a walkover, of course. It's Blair and Bankier who go through. A walkover uh, over Middleton and Tang. So our next match on court, all English, mixed doubles, Angry and Oliver against Bazella and Williams of England. <laughs>